What is going on, guys? It is your model of the IWC Gamers Goon here today with your AEW Dynamite October 28th edition review. Yes, I am back on the AEW reviews. Last night, I was not able to review the show because my roommate was actually in a Zoom call, so I don't want to bother him by starting to film a review. But AEW last night was a fun show. It was very solid from top to bottom. I would, I would, I would say it was a very good show. We started off um, AEW with a Wardlow interview um, about his upcoming match, which was against Hangman Page. MJF was obviously with Wardlow. Um, they ask Wardlow a question. MJF says, you know what? What is his is mine, and what is mine is his. His property is going to be mine, so when he wins, I'm going to basically be the champion. Sammy then comes around, says MJF. Or he he comes around. MJF's like, how you liking the jacket, little buddy? Um, and then Sammy's like, I don't like you. And then MJF says, you look like a middle schooler trying to sell Adderall to some middle school kids. So just get on out of here. And then I believe we might get to a Sammy versus MJF feud eventually. Um, obviously, that's not going to be the case for Full Gear because Sammy will be facing off against Matt Hardy. And then we also will find out later in this review who MJF will be facing at Full Gear. Then we had Hangman versus Wardlow to start off the in-ring action for the show. It's fast start pace from Adam Hangman Page. Wardlow able to slow him down early on. Um, with his with his um his power, used a big right hand. Um, pretty early on in this match, we get to see both distinct styles: the agility from Hangman, the power of um, Wardlow. Um, it was a pretty hard hitting match. Hangman able to end up hitting the buckshot lariat to finish the thing off. The poetic finish is gonna be it. This set it up that this set up for the main event. The main event was Pentagon versus Kenny. The big story of the the thing is where we where we are we gonna get Hangman versus Kenny? It set it laid it laid the basics down for what might happen on later on in the night. Um, very good stuff. I I actually hope Hangman wins. Um, at full gear, I hope he is the next challenger to John Moxley. Um, because I'm I've really been liking what Hangman's brought forth as of late. Next, we got Eddie Kingston versus Matt Seidel. Eddie Kingston comes in the ring, cuts a promo, says um, he just wants to fight. He kicks a cameraman out of the ring, saying he wasn't trained to be in the ring, so get out of his ring. Um, tonight, he's facing a man that tried to steal his thunder at the last pay-per-view in the Battle Royale. He says, bring out the Joker. Bring out Matt Seidel. Um, he says that he hopes John Moxley is watching. Matt Seidel is able to hang around for a little bit with Eddie, which I did not think was really going to happen. Uh, I, I really thought Eddie would just just beat the shit out of him, to be quite honest with you. Um, but Eddie ends up winning in the end of things. He hit it with John Moxley's very own bulldog choke. He kept it locked in past the tap out. He, he, he had it sunk in. He forced Justin Roberts to come over. Or I believe, um, I believe he didn't even force Justin Roberts. I think... I think one of the Butcher of the Blade um, brought the mic to him. They grabbed the mic, forced um, Matt Seidel to say, I quit. He said, I'm sorry, Moxley. This is what's going to happen. What is going to happen to you? Um, it sent a message. It sent a powerful message. I, I cannot explain how much I want to see Eddie Kingston beat John Moxley. Do I think it's a, there's much of a chance? No. There's a slim chance that he does. I hope we get it, just because Eddie Kingston's been putting on great work since coming into AEW. Um, I just don't know if we're actually going to get it. Next, we have the Young Bucks and the FTR guys in a promo. Both, um, they had a sit-down promo. Um, the Bucks says that they're going back to their old style. They're going back to the old Young Bucks, the little bit more ruthless Young Bucks. FTR says, you know what? You guys aren't even questioning us. How about we just leave? They walk off the set. The Young Bucks then propose a stipulation that if they lose against FTR, they will no longer be able to challenge for the AEW Tag Team Championships. It's going very Cody-esque. Can I see the Young Bucks stepping away from the tag team titles? On their standpoint, yes. But can I see Tony Khan um, committing to taking out... Because 
I'm going to be honest with you. Those guys, they they don't have much of a singles career um, in front of them. They are better together. I I don't think that they have much of... Maybe if you get a brother versus brother match, that could be cool. But at the end of the day, they're still teammates. I wouldn't split them. And if they can't challenge for the AEW championship, um, tag team championships, what's the point of even having them? What's the point? I, I honestly think they're, they're going to have to win at full gear. Just because I can't see the Young Bucks stepping away. I, I can see the Young Bucks doing it, but Tony Khan committing to putting off one of the top tag teams for good and not letting them ever hold the championships. Now that, that, that just that doesn't strike me as something Tony Khan would be willing to do. Then we got into the town hall discussion. We had Lucha Starr start things off with the questions. He had a question for Maxwell Jacob Friedman. MJF, he says, MJF, you do not have a master's degree. However, can't, or not however, how can you contribute to the financial prosperity of the inner circle? MJF says he has spoken to all the financial advisors. Um, he got a graph up, the inner circle before MJF, after MJF. He says that the inner, squir- the inner circle is going to skyrocket. It's going to sky is the limit for him, and it's just simple math. Um, then we had Dr. Britt Baker, the role model, the first role model before me, of course, but um, Dr. Britt Baker. Reba, she, she's with Dr. Britt Baker. She compliments Jericho about his smile, tries to hit on Jericho a little bit. Britt says MJF has a terrible record with friendships and asks how Chris Jericho would let him into the inner circle. Jericho says that he is not letting him into their actual inner circle. He can be a part of the team, but he's not going to be part of the inner circle, of the inner circle. MJF says he wouldn't turn on anybody because they all want the same things. They want money, and they want championships. They want the green, and they want the gold. Then we have Peter Avalon come on to ask a question. He asked for them to allow him to join the inner circle. MJF, everybody else in the ring, laughed at Peter Avalon. Then we had Eric B. come on in. Obviously, Eric Bischoff, but he said on January 20th, 1961, John F. Kennedy said, ask not what can the country do for you, but what can you do for your country? So he proposed the question to MJF, what can MJF do for the inner circle? MJF says, that's a very powerful question, and I can only use a powerful word, one word statement, friendship. Um, then he follows that up with, what does MJF believe the inner circle can do for him? He says, he's already the total package. He's able to accept that he is not the best team player, but he wants to learn how to be. He says, or then um, Eric Bischoff calls Y2J a prima donna. He says, um, as you know, Jericho is a prima donna. Jericho took frustration with this, started yelling at him. And then we get Tony yelling, shut up at Jericho. Might have been one of the best lines of Tony Collins, or Tony um, Shabani's career. Um, he said, what is the guarantee that when he joins that they won't kill each other? MJF says, this is a preposterous question. Jericho says, wait, how, how can we actually know that you won't stab us in the back? MJF says, well, Jericho, how about I ask you a question? I've checked all of the boxes. I gave you your best segment of your career. I've given you gifts. What have I not done? Jericho, um, Jericho says, well, you haven't beat me. So, he will give him a shot at full gear. So, we're getting the MJF versus Jericho one-on-one. If MJF wins at full gear, he will be joining the inner circle. MJF says he will do anything, and he means anything, to win. Ortiz then takes the mic and says, shut up. Um, all you do is run your mouth. Me and, me and Sammy don't want you in here. Santana somewhere in the middle. We don't know what he wants. Jake doesn't give a shit about you. Jericho, he might be toying with the idea of letting you in, but you ain't going to make it to the pay-per-view because next week we're going to face you and Wardlow. So we're getting that match next week with Proud and Powerful versus Wardlow and MJF. Next, we got in at the top of the hour, we got Cody versus Orange Cassidy for the TNT title. Um, This was a Lumberjack match, very similar. Um, and All Lumberjack matches are really the same. Um, goes to the outside, the best friends drop Cody at one point, um, they hit some cheap shots on Cody, but what really caused him at the end was Arn hit a kick at a, um, just, just, um, 
I don't even think Cody really knew he had a kick onto Orange Cassidy. Um, Cody then followed that up with a crossroads, turned around, saw Orange Cassidy, just hit a crossroads. Um, he didn't really think that Arn was involved. Um, after that, it turns into a big brawl at the end. We have Billy and Austin Gunn standing tall while J Darby Allen watches them from the crowd. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought it would have been the right time to pull the trigger with um, Orange Cassidy. I think Orange Cassidy versus Darby Allen would be a great match at full gear. But what more does Cody have to do in the TNT title picture? Orange Cassidy, he's coming off the best feud of his career. You can't have him come in and lose to Cody. That was a bad decision. That was a bad decision. Darby Allen, he's already he's already went the time limit with Cody. He's 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 had his struggles with Cody, but this time Darby Allen needs to win. Um, then we get Night or I'm my bad, I jumped. Then we get Miro and Kip Sabian attacking the best friends in the back after Penelope knocks on their door saying "trick or treat." Little Halloween um, innuendo there. Nothing special. Um, I imagine we're probably going to get that um, next week or one of the following shows of the pay-per-view. I don't think we're probably going to get that on the pay-per-view. Then we got the NWA Women's Championship being defended. We had Serena D versus Layla Hirsch. Started off very technical. Was, um, Layla Hirsch was able to stick her out with Serena D. Um, pretty impressive. But Layla Hirsch missed a high-risk move. Costed her the match. Um, and Serena Deeb is able to win via submission. Serena Deeb, um, I feel like Thunder Rosa is better than Serena Deeb. Um, just in terms of in-ring style, the way I like um, in-ring style. Um, but Layla Hirsch was impressive. Um, I, I, would, I would look into signing her possibly um, for the AEW women's division. But... It was, a, it was a solid match. It was a solid match. One of the better matches um, we've gotten from the women. And then after this, we had a very lackluster announcement of a match at Full Gear. We had Nyla and Sheeta. Sheeta literally just said, Nyla, at Full Gear, I will fight you. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't play a video package. They didn't, they didn't, it, it literally was out of nowhere. I, I wasn't a fan of it. Then we had Sean Spears versus VSK. This match lasted all but 10 seconds. Sean Spears hits a C4, slowly crawls to him, pins him. Um, good for Spears. He needs to pick up wins. He he hasn't been as good as we thought he would be coming into Dynamite, so he does need to string together some wins. He he recently cracked the top five. I think he needs to get back in his his full swing of things. Um, then he goes to ringside, tries to attack a dude that's wearing a bowl outfit. He goes to grab the steel slug. Um from our, our um Tully and and the the bull takes his mask off it's Scorpio Sky he hits a TKO and standing tall um and we're actually getting that match next week rather than at full gear then we got announced that John Silver and Orange Cassidy will be on the buy-in um great thing for John Silver John Silver deserves it um he's been a star for the Dark Order and Orange Cassidy I can't speak highly enough about the guy then we got into the main event. We had Kenny Omega versus Pentagon Part 2. Kenny, he taunted the Lucha Brothers early on. He had the Triple A, Triple A championship, um, which Ray Phoenix lost to Kenny Omega. He he kind of flaunted that. He was under his shirt. He kind of poked fun at him, laid it on the mat. So then they start trading chops. Kenny ends up catching Penta's glove, um, slaps him with the glove. That was a pretty funny moment. Match the match continued. Um, it, it went it went the full length of the rest of the show. Um, Kenny hit multiple snap dragons into a V trigger and got a two count. Then hit another V trigger and tried to go for a one winged angel. Pentagon escaped that. Um, after he escaped that, Kenny did end up hitting another V trigger um, with Penta in the corner. Um, then Kenny takes him to, up to the top rope. Penta. Hits a headbutt, causing um, Kenny Omega to go flying onto the ramp. Pentagon then hits a Canadian Destroyer onto the ramp um, from the top rope onto Kenny Omega. Um, then he follows that up with a package power driver onto Omega. Omega kicks out at two. Penta then misses a pump handle. He he, he hits a kick onto Kenny. Um, they, they both are on their knees at this point. Um, and Kenny gets up out of nowhere, hits a running knee. Um, then he goes for the one-winged angel again. Penta um, gets out of that, snaps the arm of Kenny Omega. Pen, um, Penta can't get the pump handle yet again. Um, Kenny starts hitting some more chops. 
Um, then we got a kick out from or a kick out of nowhere from um, Penta last def or last um, last effort um, kick. Um, then Kenny hits a running knee out of nowhere again. Um, he he struggled to get um, Penta up in position for the one winged angel, but he did, and we're getting the match that we all were looking forward to coming in to this tournament. We're getting Hangman Omega at full gear, right where they need to be. I can't wait for the match. That's already my favorite match on the card. You know how much I've loved Hangman. You know how much I'm a fan of Kenny. This is going to be a great match. This is going to be a great match. Winner goes on to face Moxley or Eddie Kingston, possibly, but if, if, I'm, if I'm booking it, I, I would I'd take a good long look in the hangman, Adam Page. Um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. You, got, you know where to find me on Twitter at GamersGoonYT, on Instagram, TheGoonGamerYT, and all those places. So anyways, it's been your role model of the IWC. I'll be seeing you guys next time. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, do whatever you guys need to do. And I'll be seeing you guys next week.